Welcome to another edition of the Empowered uh, uh, Hour. I'm Al Kumar. And I am Hanifa. From home. <laughs> and that's Nagasi in her lap. And oh, hey. we are your hosts. We're switching it up in 2020, as you can see. We are your hosts each and every Thursday from every six, Thursday. 6 to 7 p.m. So we're doing things a little bit different here. So we welcome all you guys who are watching us for the very first time. A lot of times we, we were on air Wednesdays at 2. And for a lot of you guys um, out there, you weren't able to watch us live because most of the people are doing their thing at 2 o'clock and doing their work thing. So we figured we switch it up a little in 2020 and uh, get more of you out there in here with us to share. So welcome welcome to the empower hour today's show um is going to be a timely show we're talking about the future of 2020 what does that look like for us what does moving forward into 2020 look like for us and we definitely need your assistance so come on and chime in on um if you're watching us on social media i have the stream up if you're on the watch party I can see your comments there, and we'll get you in on air. Um, so definitely chime in on the discussion. How are you feeling, Miss Hanifa? I am okay. I am okay. Thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it. <laughs> not a worry. Not a worry. I am fine. I am. I am fine. I am here. It is 2020. I am breathing. I have life. I am grateful. My children are okay. My family are okay. I am loved. I have good friends. All is well. Ashe. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So um, for those of you, if you want to see the entire show with Hanifa up on the screen, audio a lot clearer than you would, these are our, ca these are our backup shots. So if you're watching us on Facebook here or you're watching us on Instagram there, uh, we welcome you and we thank you. But if you want to see the uh, more professional version of the program, you want to go on to eLife Media Group. Right now, we're streaming live on Facebook under eLife Media Group. And that way you can watch Hanifa's facial expressions and see that handsome son of hers and all that other good stuff. Um, the future of 2020, how, how Hanifa. You said, hi, my. Yes, ma'am. How I'm, are you? I'm doing my, well, somebody, a uh, friend of mine used to always say wonderfully well. I'm doing <laughs> wonderfully well. So I don't have any complaints or quarrels. 2020 came in with a bang, <laughs> literally yes, <ma 'am>. yes. <laughs> and figuratively. Yes. It came yes. in with a bang, but um, yeah, and I'm sure we'll, we'll get into all that too with our lovely President Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> But for, for, for 2020, Hanifa, what does that look like um, in your mind as far as a collective? We're talking us as a collective, the future of, let's say, blacks in America. I think there's a couple of things. I think for a lot of, a lot of uh, collectively speaking, mm -hmm. um, 2019, even as far back as 2018 maybe, mm -hmm. had already begun. To, um prepare us because we saw people taking the journey taking a path of knowledge um and really trying to like you you sort of started to see a shift mm -hmm. right in our thinking and our consciousness mm -hmm. as black people in this society as black people globally um you started to see a shift i think there will be a continuation of that for some and then there's going to be a building on that and when i say that it goes from now from knowing to doing yeah. So what? Yes. What you when you say you you noticed a shift in consciousness? Like what? Like give me some examples of what you notice that that uh that's that's different in us than times past. Well, I think that a lot of people are um will focus a lot and really like accepting ourselves mm -hmm. as we are. Um, and not necessarily trying to, um, what do you call it? We, we weren't, we, it seemed like we weren't, we were no longer, it seems like we're no longer like trying to acclimate to white culture 
So you start to see a separation, right? Mm. Uh, people were reading more. Um, and it can also be attributed to the age of information that we're in as well. Information is everywhere now. And that, that can be challenging as well because you, you, you sometimes you're not sure if you're getting the right information. But if you want to do the research, this stuff is readily available to you. So I see a lot, a lot more of us like reading, um, a lot more of us loving on ourselves, a lot more of us recognizing the importance of working collectively versus individually. So those are just some of the shifts that, that I've observed, at least. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, and I, but you're right. That whole work, that collective thing is, is, is big, and I'm excited about that because I'm seeing a lot more of that, too. And, I, you know, and I'm seeing a lot and hearing a lot more of discussions of us where we need to do this ourselves. Whenever there's, you know, some issues taking place in society that's, that's unfair or seems unequal, um, we, we are more inclined to say, well, then we need to do our own thing then. We need to stop relying on other people to, you know, to come through for us, but we need mm -hmm. to come through for ourselves. So yes. I'm hearing a lot more of those conversations. Yes. Um, the healing. Yes. Right? You know, that's yes. huge. That was huge in two, 2019, and I can yes. see us moving forward in that direction as well. Self-healing. That's another thing I'm really excited about. That's kind of like the buzzword these days. Um, yeah, and just um, and the whole revealing, you mentioned it too. Like just to, you know, I, I said this the other day. I don't, there's no more secrets. You know, I used to be top secret you know, information and all that stuff. All that stuff is out the window. There's really no more secrets in this society because it's just too many people who um, have the knowledge, have the awareness, and and, are, and is willing to share it with others. So the but exposure, exposure, though, like what we're talking about is there was a lot of exposure, a lot of ex uh, things being exposed, a lot of things being uncovered. In 2019, we saw a lot of that, but I also think that there was a lot, a lot of um, exposing of lies first within ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's a collective. So the expansion always starts from within, and then it expands out. And I think a lot of us have um, started to kind of be a little bit more uh, transparent, mm -hmm. a little bit more. We were kind of tapping into um, being authentic. So just dealing with like lies within our own self, lies that we've been told that we believe, and therefore we kind of built on, um, that was pretty much controlling our lives. So you saw a lot of people uncovering and, and exposing that within them own, their own selves, and therefore removing the barriers that's kind of hindering them. And then we saw it as a whole, where a lot of people were being quote unquote expose a lot of things will be uncovered but i think it starts with the individual as, as well because if you talk to different people i saw a lot of people just say you know i noticed this about myself a lot of people started talking about mental health stuff a lot of people started talking about triggers that they realized that they have you know a lot of people started taking personal responsibility for some of the, the errors in their own lives so that's that's the exposure and the uncovering I think you started individually within oneself first, and then we also saw it on a broader scale. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, that whole self accountability thing, that's huge. That's huge, you know, because it's, it's like you said, it starts there. I mean, if you, if you aren't willing to do that, then right. you can't expect much change. You really right. can't. You can't. Right. You know, and then, like you, as you mentioned as well, change starts within first. You can't expect it help anybody outside of your your own realm of aura and space unless right. you first do the work on yourself and it's a right. step process and if you're not even willing to look at yourself and say i got some flaws and i need some crux about my character that i need to smooth out and, and make better if you're not even willing to do that that's step one then you we 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 can't use you we can't use right. you out here Right. Real. You right. know, not to no high degree anyway. What, right. what do you see as, uh, and family, chime in, what do you guys see as something that uh, we haven't tackled and we, that's necessary moving forward to 2020? Or maybe we still have great challenges with that 
You know what I'm saying? If we put much a little more focus on blank, then you know what I'm saying we'll we'll be in a better position. And we're still talking collectively, not individually, collectively as a society within a society. Oh, you want me? I'll go first. I I, I see I see the um the um the gender war. Mm -hmm. the gender war between black women and um, black men and where we are currently today. And again, I got to keep saying this. I'm not talking about individuals. I know it's a lot of folks out there saying I'm good. You know, I got a husband I love or a wife I love and we good. Okay, now that's beautiful. I'm talking across the spectrum, collectively as a society where we are right now as far as our relationships are concerned to each other. And um, for me, I see that as a grave concern that we need to really be focused in on. Your thoughts, Hanifa? Yeah, I agree with that. I think we still have a lot of work to do in that area. Um, but I think a lot of the, the work that has to happen for that to change, has that we really need to work on our self-love. I think we need to really get back to what, what, what do we consider love in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Talking about self-love, and I think that um, in order for us to really work on our relationships and get it right, mm -hmm. we have to learn how to love ourselves first, mm -hmm. right? Um, but definitely the relationship thing, relationship thing, I think it's going to always be an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we need uh, to be exposed to more elders who have been married for a length of time and who are transparent in their marital stories. Because we know that you being together 50 years, you had some turmoil in there. So we not act like it's just been smooth the whole time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, people, people are out here having genuine struggles, and we really, for the most part, a lot of us want it to work. No one goes into a relationship unless you're just in there actually doing your thing, right. but no one is going into a committed relationship. You're talking marriages here, right? right. Going to marriages saying, yeah, this is going to end anyway. No one goes into right. marriage like that, want it to end. So, but with that being said, I think we just need help. The other thing too that we need to get away from is like trying to kind of handle our relationship issues on our own, mm. right? But we have to find people who are not biased. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your friends are good, but if they are your friends and not your partner's friends, sometimes their advice can be biased. And you need to be able to sort through that. And it, and it goes the other way. Find people who mutually, who love the both of you guys. Mm -hmm. Right? Who, who care about the both of you always not one-sided. And those are the people you want to have those conversations with. Also confidentiality. You know, because not because somebody marriage is having problems today, means they're not going to be together tomorrow. So if they're talking to you and they're reaching out to you, it's, it's, gen, it's to get genuine help. And if somebody comes to you, Altama, about their relate for advice, that means they trust, they value your advice. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't spoil it by not using confidentiality, right? Yeah. Or using it as an opportunity to gossip. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the relationship department is going to be ongoing, and I definitely think that we, we definitely need more work in that area. But I see, I see it getting better. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, I think I, I'm with you. That as long as we work, we put we put focus and emphasis on ourselves, healing ourselves, that comes naturally. The mm -hmm. whole relationship part comes if both parties are doing the work on themselves. You know, it's it's it's, it's so important to do that. You know, it really is. And um, you know, I and I like to. And I like to give like examples of instruction because you hear the cliche so much so often. 
just heal, your, heal yourself or do the work on yourself or love yourself. But for some of us out there, we don't even know what that looks like. You know, mm -hmm. especially those of us who have suffered through a whole lot of trauma. We all have suffered through trauma. If you are black and alive and living in America today, you have suffered through trauma, you know, whether you want to admit it or not. But mm -hmm. some of us more severely than others. And so I always like to, because and then some don't know where to start, don't know what that looked like. What do you mean, heal you? You know what I'm saying? All I know, my whole life has just been fighting and arguing and, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and every dysfunctional thing known to man. And then somebody walk up to you and say, oh, well, all you need to do is just uh, love yourself. You know, right. like, what does that look like? You know what I'm saying? What does for that people, look like? For right. people who don't have a clue. So yeah. you yeah. want to tackle that a little bit, Hanifa? What, what, what does that look like for somebody who don't know where to start to start beginning to heal themselves or beginning to, you know? Well, I pers well personally, for myself, I think that the first thing that has to be tackled is the inferiority complex that has kind of forced on us, you know, because if you feel inferior, what is there to love? You know what I'm saying? So I think the difficulty with a lot of us that, you know, we're, we're struggling to love ourselves is because we don't really know ourselves. We know who we're, we were told we are, and we've always been presented as inferior to somebody else. So I think the first part of it is tackling that inferiority complex that, more, that a lot of us have as black people. Um, so I think once that's tackled and you start to really get into like your history, um, forget your history. Like you can, I'm not forget your history like that, but I mean, not just your history, but just getting in, like going within yourself, right? And who you are as a spirit being, right? And walk yourself out. Because before we even get to black history, right? We're spirit beings before we even get there. Before we get to the skin that we're in, right? There's so much more to us than that. So I think a big part of it is to get past the, the, the idea that you are inferior and there is nothing to love, to get past the idea that you contributed nothing to this world or people that look like you, you know? To get past the idea that these are the categories, these are the only slots that can be filled if you are a black person. So I think that's the first thing that needs to be dismantled. And then once we do that, we can work our way up to self-love. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. self-love is taking care of yourself. Self-love is taking care of your, your family. Self-love is taking care of your people. But I think that before we can get there, because you will never understand what self-love is if you will feel inferior. Because your first thing is, what is there to love? Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, for, for, for me, what that looks like for me is... Um, going to the places where you don't normally like to go. <laughs> I mean, those painful places. Those places where a lot of us like to um, project outward or yes. make excuses yeah. for or stay in denial about and yes. all those things. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're hearing things about yourself from multiple different sources but it's the same information. And whenever you hear it, your first response, I always te always know when people are in like uh, barrier mode, because if you're saying something to them and they don't, you're not even getting the whole point out and the first thing they do is shake their head, then mm -hmm. that lets me know without receiving what's being said, <laughs> that lets me know there's a pain spot right there. So for <laughs> me, I think, um, going in and getting rooted into knowing yourself better because that's where you got to go there first before you even can love yourself. You got to know who you are to sit in those uncomfortable moments. And that's hard to do, especially when you're not used to doing it. You know, right. when you know that there's some things about your character that are uh, displeasing. Not, only, not even just to others, to yourself as well, because you block them out. <laughs> if, you, if they were pleasing to you, you'd be bragging about it. So, right. You know? Right. So those 
those right. areas of your life that you that are, 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 are displeasing to go there uh, intentionally go there with, with, with you know what I'm saying to open yourself up to allow yourself to feel um, uncomfortable you know and 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 there in within that space is where um, perseverance comes yeah lives yeah. I should say. Or, you know what I'm saying? Because you are able to really, instead of, because you can't fix something you're not willing to admit that it's wrong. Right. That it needs a, that right. it needs a fix. It. So that automatically, you know what I'm saying? You opening yourself up to uh, to be able to um, be aware. Now this is conscious. Here's where the conscious piece comes. It's like, wow, you know what? I, I am this way. And mm-hmm. I need to really check that about myself and be better about that. And you mm-hmm. go to, to through off the process of doing just that. And when you do and you succeed in che- in correcting your course, now you feel better about yourself. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that shows to other people. So all that, I say all that to say, I think for me, self-love starts there in the pain. Yeah, in, in yeah. uncomfortable places. I also, I think um, another thing that just came to my mind as you were saying that, um, that I, I, I'm looking forward to us kind of just recognizing in 2020 going forward mm-hmm. is um, collect, I guess I would say like collectively respected each other's individuality. Mm-hmm. You know, we like to say, you hear this a lot. Good one. Um, we're not a monolith. You hear that a lot, but I don't know that we really understand that. You know, I'm really differentiating between uniformity and, and unity. There is a difference. You can have unity without being necessarily uniform. You know what I'm saying? I can have a different opinion than yours and still work with you towards a goal, right? Because at the end of the day, the focus is that goal, unless the goal is an issue. You know what I'm saying? But if we have the same goals, both of us want to build a house, you know? Um, and it's like, okay, so we know that we know the house needs a roof. We know, and then we get we get caught up over, well, don't put no shingles on. The whole roof should just be concrete. Then just just this, so the house never gets built, okay? Because we're arguing over the materials used to build it, to put the roof on, you know. So I think that, and so what happens is because I don't think the shingles are cute or the ones that you choose, Altima, is not cute. So now I'm like. We don't need to build a house together. I don't want to build a house with you people because right. you have you like you like poker that shingles and that's just lack lack of taste. You have you have no sense of taste. So move along, you know. And I'm just I said the house just stays there and and doesn't get built. Over I call it really really minor stuff. So I think a lot of times um, we talk about cancel culture before and so forth. I think a lot of times we're we're jumping on bandwagons. We're not really thinking for ourselves. Mm. Um, we're doing things because we, we are in this black bubble and we think that because we're black, this is what we're supposed to do because it seems, we're, we're, we, need, we need to be careful with social media and stuff because we automatically assume that what we see on social media is the majority, yeah. right? And so it's like, you have to process, but I don't really agree with that. And so either people end up being quiet because they don't agree, because if you don't agree and on social media, majority of blacks agree with it, or black people agree with it, and you a black person, you risk the, the chance of being called cool, sell out. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody want to do that. No one wants to be on the outskirts of the minority. You know what I mean? So I think um, just really collectively respecting in each, each other's individuality is something that we can work on going forward yeah. that yes we are all black but we don't think the same we were not raised the same we don't come from the same environment our home environments were different our parents were different our upbringings were different even if we live in the same community so i think we need to respect that and understand that people sometimes filter stuff through whatever their experiences were and be patient and still loving with each other even when we find ourselves disagreeing yeah yeah, good, good point. I, and I think a lot of that is rooted in ego. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's rooted in ego. My way is better than your way. 
So mm-hmm. you're stupid for feeling or thinking that way because I don't think that way. So that makes you stupid. It's really, it's, it's, rooted, it's rooted in ego that your way has got to be. I think it's fair too. Because you gotta think, Alkamai, if it's you, if you already, if they already say you're a minority in this society, right? The idea of it's, it's almost like we feel like we can't afford to disagree. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we already are outnumbered, <laughs> so we can't afford to. There's, there's not fair there as well. Like no, you know. But here's the thing: we almost the ones that we are the bearers of cancel culture. So you see the. You see how that doesn't match? Mm. On one hand, it's like, you know, we don't want anyone else to be different from the group because we can't afford to lose. But then again, we quick to cancel people like that. So which one is it? Yeah. 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 Right. Good point. Good point. And 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 I, I see that as being another stumbling block away from our unity. You know what I'm saying? Of our collective unity you know what i'm saying yeah. unity don't mean we all gotta agree on the exact same thing right and be moving you know what i'm saying because all of the people in in society that are not of our same culture um mm-hmm. have a lot more unity than we do and they all don't agree on the same things at all times you know what i'm saying but they they understand the collective the, the importance of the cohesiveness of, of sticking together uh, for the mm-hmm. end goal, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's a that's that's a good point. What about um, what about looking for a savior? Should we still be waiting? <laughs> Should we still be waiting for a savior in 2020, family? <laughs> Should we still be waiting around for somebody to come back and save us from our miseries? Oh, we? <laughs> so I just want to throw that in there because a lot of us do. A lot of us feel like, you know what I'm saying? It is. I'm going to say this, and it might be controversial for some people. I am a black woman. Mm-hmm. I am the savior of the world. Mm-hmm. Period. Period. We always have been. I we always have been. Always have been, and I'll say it again. I am a black woman, and I am the savior of the world. Ashe. There is no one coming to save me. I received that. That's I it. Received that. Ashe. In a nutshell. Yeah. In a nutshell. I yeah. I think that again. I, I think those are some old, worn out ideas. That, yes. You know what I'm saying if, if if look look how much we've accomplished. Um through our own efforts already as it stands in comparison to 400 years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and our ancestors in chains and things like that. Look at what we have been able to accomplish on our own efforts. Now, I'm not saying that, you know what I'm saying, that, that God don't have, you know, don't, don't play a role and, and all that kind of stuff, but I was always taught to never look outside of yourself Yeah. For the creator, yeah. for God, yeah. for Yahshua, for Jesus, whoever you, whatever title you want to put on them, um, and it is, it was those who were willing to um, depend on the God within was the ones that make the make the things happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And no spirit, came, you know what I'm saying, came down from the sky and and and, and help us break these chains. You know what I'm saying, and help us, you know, do what we need to do. It was the from the strength and the might and the force of individuals, mm-hmm. and the God within those individuals who collectively came together and made it happen. So, mm-hmm. this whole thing of waiting on somebody to come and do something for us that we don't even already have the power vested within ourselves to do already, we already got the power. But I think the in the being remaining in the mind state of waiting on somebody else or something else or whomever else to come and help save us stops us from progression stops us from doing what we need to do to get further than where we are today so it's a hindrance mm-hmm. process mm-hmm. I-, I don't I, it's not it doesn't even just um hinder us and like 
it, it slows us, it doesn't even just stop us from doing certain things, because there are people who um, believe in a savior coming, and they're very active, and they're doing the things that, you know, they, they're action people, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's not only necessarily that, but I know exactly what you're talking about, that passiveness that comes with, with that way of thinking. Um, I don't think it's, it's, it's just even um, just stopping us from, you know, I think it's also created this, this person of, this forgive your enemies individual, right? <laughs> this forgive your enemies individual, this turn the other cheek. I only got two, okay? As far as I know, I only got two. So after I turn one cheek and I turn the other one, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to do, okay? Mm. But I think it just creates this person that think that they can love evil over to their side. And that's a problem for me. Come on, that's a good... So repeat that, please. Yeah, I think it creates an individual that believes that they can love evil over to their side. Mm. And that's a problem. So, because what would happen? What happens is if you believe that, right? And you believe that you really believe that, no matter how much evil kicks you in the face, you gonna keep going back to evil, and you gonna keep praying for evil, and you gonna keep trying to hold evil hand. And every time evil invites you over to their their home to do evil things to you, you gonna find yourself going because this might be the time that I'm gonna win evil over. It just creates stupidity, mm. and I think that's what I have a problem with. Yeah, and I think it 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 it, it rejects the the laws of nature, the polarities of of the laws of nature. It's like you know what I'm saying you 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 cannot have it um, hunky dory, all happy, all lovey dovey, all peaceful all of the time. That's just not yeah. in the laws of nature. There's it's storms. not. I agree. Alchema, that's I agree. It is not. You know, I and, I, and, and a lot that, of us think not. we can do that. I don't know where we get that idea from. There is that, that utopian way of thinking. Yeah. I'm like, that's not realistic. It is so anti-nature. Right, right. You know, but, but Sita just put everything you need to be great is already in you. That's Activate it. that soul and live life to the fullest. And I have to say to that, today I was driving and I thought about the, like, uh, the word like resonate. You know, like when you go somewhere and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know why that message or what I heard or that thing resonated so much with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, like information. You could come to information and be like, I feel like I know this information, right? So most people say, yeah, um, that resonated with me. And I was like, what if resonated is just remembering? Memory. You know what I mean? Memory. Like maybe, we, maybe we're not lost. Maybe we just forgot. And so life is just about like reminding us and the more like, you know, because I always think about some things that I may have never seen in my life that I think I have never seen in my life. And then I'm like, why does this resonate with me? Why am I so glued to this right now? Why, you know, and it's like, why does it seem so familiar? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, right. So I'm like, I really, I just like to think about it today. Like maybe, maybe we are not lost. Maybe we just forgot. <laughs> Right. You know, and that's what life is about. But not just that, but that's one of the things that life is about. Um, it's just kind of re reminding us. Yeah. So yes, I agree with Sita. Um, I'm I'm full agreement with that. I think we are born with everything that we need. I think we're born with the God essence in us. I do not think that we need to go outside of ourselves to get it, to obtain it, to acquire it. I do not think so. I think that we are born with it. I think that we need to exercise it. I think that we need to build on it. I think that we need to. Yeah, so that's it. I got this last Yeah, yeah. Ashe, yeah, I agree with, with you on all that. Um, moving on, what about um, what about in 2020? I, I read an article that, that was spot on for me that said uh, we need to quit brainwashing our children into believing college is the only way. <laughs> it's either college or you just, your life is going to be in shambles. <laughs> You know, yeah, and I and I love I love that, and I love that this is it's starting to take a more mainstream approach because yes. yeah, and and you know I tell a quick story. I remember when my daughter, who's now twenty six, when she finished high school and was preparing herself um, to go off to college, 
And uh, we, I sat down with her. It's just she and I just to have a conversation about her future. I wanted to know what her plans were, what was on her mind, what was her thinking for this point forward. And it was clear to me, based on our conversation, that she wasn't quite sure, which is fine. Most, ch most pe ch children her age aren't. You know what I'm saying? That's just unfortunately where we are in society, and it's a, that's a whole other story. But anyway, so I started talking to her about options. Okay, you're not sure what you, you know, what, what, what you really want to do with your future right now. So um, have you considered other options outside of the college realm? And we talked about trade school and what that might look like things of that nature. So she took the conversation we had and shared it with my brother, who's a lot older than me, who has um, children of his own, um, uh, two or three have went through college. And I'll never forget this, he came back to me, he I wanna talk to you, you don't need to be uh, trying to, uh, 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 what do he say, uh, uh, um, advise her not to go to college and you know da 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 and I'm like wait a minute that's not what I was doing I was sharing with her options well she should be going to college that's where the conversation should be you should be talking to her about that and for me that really resonated with me like wow um wow so in his mind anything short of college for her was um was a dead deal because he saw that as a negative. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking like, I, and now I'm, I'm looking around me now. Now mind you, he's a lot older than me. We about 20 years apart. So, um, and I'm looking around me and all my peers and I'm watching how the, the, the majority of those who have a trade is earning twice as much as those who went to college. These are the people, I'm watching all these examples around me. And I'm like, okay, so the, you know, the dichotomy now is off in my head. I'm like, okay, you're telling me to encourage my child to go to college, but I'm looking around me and seeing how people are more, being more super successful who haven't went to college. So again, and I know that's not the case for every individual, but from right. my experience, I've been seeing that a lot. So mm -hmm. it was just too, it was just uh, common sense for me to talk to my child about um, different options. So when I saw this article, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that this is really starting <laughs> to get more, you know, more push behind it. Because we right. do, we get, we get, we, we, we take all our money and dump it into all these institutions, and it's not a guarantee. I remember reading a few years ago, they said half, half of all college graduates graduate from college and wind up in a career that they didn't even need college for. That's half of all the ch children. This was some, what some of them, it might be even higher now, because this I read this maybe about five years ago. So I say all that to say, we gotta start changing up the way we think. You know what I'm saying? We gotta start looking at the table and putting, you know, putting everything out on the table again and saying, what makes sense here? You know what I'm saying? Does it make sense to go into debt without an absolute guarantee? Or you can, you know what I'm saying? Or you can go and get a skill that'll stay with you forever, where you can work this skill and make the, 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 the statistics show a whole lot more than going into debt in college. You know what I'm saying? Well, why isn't that even being discussed in some households? Why is it that college is just so, you're so laser focused on it's college or nothing. You've got to go to college. You, my, you must, why? Why is that so ingrained in our minds? So I'm, I'm grateful that you know, these conversations like this are starting to be more uh, mainstream or opening, opening ourselves up to have these discussions. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I think sometimes people just get, um, it sounded that uh, you, you was mentioning your brother, and that could possibly be just one focus. I think that there should be many options on the table for our children. Mm -hmm. If they choose to go to college, um, I think we should be preparing ourselves to be able to, to help them pay for it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I, I, I definitely believe that because when they come out, you don't want it to be, especially if you were boggled down with that, you don't want that for your own children. But I do believe um, all options should be on the table. I also believe that every everything, you don't have to go to college for everything, but there are some things you have to go to the institution for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There just, they're just are some things. And it's not, the, the funny thing is that it's not a whole bunch of things now, but there are those degrees that you definitely need yeah. in order for, you know. True. Yeah, so I, I definitely believe that, but I do believe that there should be more than one option um, yeah. on the table for children. I'm not sure why people get offended when the conversation goes in the direction of, well, you don't have to go, but it depends on what your child wants to do. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. If they're if they're thinking about, um, oh, I want to do plumbing or whatever it may be, I, I, I want to be an um, what do you call it? Then people would have mechanic. I don't know why I'm thinking auto mechanic. No, a, a mechanic. If you want to be a mechanic, like those, you could go, you could pick up a trade, you know. But even in those things, you hear some people say, well, you need to go to school for a business degree. Did you not hear the brother or the sister say they want to be a mechanic? <laughs> PG County School of the Road is offering classes <laughs> for, for, for a fraction a, of the cost. Of dollars. You know, I, I don't know. I think it's um, a lot of it too um, is we have this obsession of being within, I, I don't know how to say this because um, I might offend people, but. <laughs> This, this close proximity to whiteness. No, honestly, I'm being very honest. So, you have people, you send kids to school who, they don't even know why they're in school. They just know that, what do you call them degrees? The liberal arts degrees. They just know that I'm supposed to go to college. <laughs> they don't really know why. They don't even know what they really want to do. And I'm talking, 18, 19, 20. That's you are not sure. You're just going through it because you need to have, you need to be somebody in this society. That's my point. Right? Because the degree is going to make no you somebody. Why. Right. So no I think that, 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 that's, doing this question. that's the problematic way of thinking. But yes, there are some things that you definitely should go and acquire a degree for. Yeah. It is absolutely necessary. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. options should be on the table for our children. Yeah. Yeah. What about what about our, our economic the economic piece? Well, we touched on it a little bit. When we said we're we're pooling, we're, we're beginning to pool our monies a lot better. I, I I I saw something up in New York. Shout out to them two sisters in New York who put together a Kwanzaa crawl. And um, oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Did you read that? That was awesome. Where these two yeah. sisters they organized. All these, and they've been doing it for a while. This is like their sixth year running or something. Well, oh, during Kwanzaa time, they actually take uh, groups of p people and they go, they go bar, they do it with bars. But I can okay. imagine we, you can do it with all kinds of different things. And they went mm -hmm. bar to bar, spreading their money around in black owned businesses. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it all, they grossed over uh, 250000 dollars for that one community i think it was um it was some parts of brooklyn and harlem mm -hmm. and they grossed um a quarter of a million dollars just by doing this and i'm like whoa right. so you know my mind was racing with how can we implement that here and yeah so, yeah 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 so um the uh, the money piece so i said all that to say you know what i'm saying moving forward and thinking of those type of creative ways of how we can do more in building up our own infrastructure yes. financially, yes. economically. Yeah, and I definitely look forward to us bringing in more guests to talk about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Definitely financial literacy and health. Oh, that was another thing that I'm saying in 2020 um, that, I'm, that I, I'm looking forward to. A lot of people are starting to take their health a lot more serious. Yeah. Which is really, really, yeah, that's really, really good. Uh, but the financial literacy literacy part, uh, I, I saw a quote that said, um, poor people poor people remain poor because they always think everything is a scam or something like that, right? <laughs> and there is some truth in that. 
because we don't be out here justice and each other with our money. No we just trust. do not. But I actually think we need to understand that when we're able to pull our resources together, we can do more by doing so. Because it makes no sense, Alkamar, that you're in your corner making 40000 I'm in my corner making 40000 Somebody else in their corner making 40, 40, and you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and everybody just in their corner struggling with their 40 grand. Where we could actually throw that in a pool or throw some of that in a pool and start investing in some things. And that could bring in more money for each of us that adds on to our 40 grand. But we're not really thinking like that because no, no one wants to, we have, that's the other thing. Going forward in 2020, we need to, hmm. We need to really figure out. We need to work on our relationship with money. Mm. Yeah. We, we don't have we don't have the best relationship with money. We really really don't. Yeah. Yeah, we really don't. We don't. We, yeah, we don't. So I, <laughs> I think that's something that we can work on. Yeah. Um, but we, and we could tell, right? You could tell where someone's heart is at by you could check. You could just look. yourself like i can look at myself mm -hmm. and i can know like when i'm um like stressed right mm -hmm. i can tell even if i don't feel it and i might not think like i'm necessarily stressed about anything mm -hmm. it manifested itself in with me in bad months like spending my money like in the worst ways <laughs> it don't be anything expensive like expensive designer bags because that's not me but it'd be like little stuff like i don't been I don't bought a cup of cappuccino the whole week. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? And I have tea at home. Like, stuff, it's just like little stuff like that that I can tell where I'm not even thinking about my money. I'm just spending mm. because of stress. Mm. So I think we just need to change our relationship with money. I actually think a good thing to do is really figure out the toxic emotional attachment that we have to money. Mm. That's a problem. Mm hmm we yeah. talked about that a little bit off air too the other day when you was we was you you had brought up something about how it, um, we 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 it's 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 difficult for us a lot of us to uh, pray you know to be happy for those who are doing well. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. What do, call, what do they call it? Crab in the barrel yeah. mindset. And that's right. Um, I'm not I'm not sure I'm not sure what that's about. Is I don't know if that's like. Within human nature, or, or is it considered like a collective thing? I'm not sure exactly what that is. But the, if you cannot celebrate somebody's success, uh -huh. right, you are you are going to miss your own. If you can't show gratitude and be thankful and and, and rejoice over somebody else's success, yeah, I, I wish you luck with yours. That's a good, good, good point. I agree. I agree, because what happens is you're going through life with your hands, with your fists tight, as opposed to being open to receive. And so you're, you know what I'm saying? So you go out of your way to, to, to hang on to the little bit you have without sharing or being generous and being open. And so you can't receive that way. Not much. Um, and speaking of the economic piece, uh, Susum, I plan to, we do a family vacation every year with my okay. whole family. Um, and this year, my goal is when we all get together is to bring the subject up about us um, going back into, because we did it at one time before. It was very successful. It was short-lived, but it was successful. Um, okay. Going into a, a family Susu, putting our monies together as a family, you know what I'm saying, to be able to grow something more than a family vacation, which is wonderful. I love it. I love, enjoy, look forward to it every year. But I'm, you know, I think with all the um, resources that I have in my own family, we could be doing, uh, we could be making a greater impact on the world around us if we pooled our money together. We were more smart about what we do, and um, and I and I implore other folks out there to do the same with their family. Start small. Even if it's just two or three of you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And if you don't know what a susu is, definitely look it up. 
Um, it's basically like a um, being your own bank, really. It's just being your own bank, cutting out the middleman and all the fees and all that stuff, and now you and your family become the bank. But it's a really good um, 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 scenario, and it's been around forever in, in our culture. Susu has yes. been around forever and ever. So I think that can help us build and move it forward into 2020. Yeah. Um, what about the, um, the ADOS movement? Where's that these days? I haven't really been keeping up with the ADOS, but I did see that the, the movement or the, the, um, the recognition of the movements People are starting, people from like, the, I see the conversations with people that where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So people in the Caribbean have finally started catching on to it. Mm -hmm. The part of it, because I don't want to say all people who are involved in ADOS are like this. But the, those people, I don't want to, I don't want to even begin to think that all people who are part of the ADOS movement are this divisive. However, I've noticed a lot of people from the Caribbean are now catching on to it. And they're like, are these people kidding me? Mm -hmm. Really? So there was like a big conversation back and forth uh, where people was telling people, like other people from the Caribbean, they need to be um, on their knees thanking African Americans. Like there was a lot of, you know, um, <laughs> you know, just really a lot of attacks back and forth. Yeah, and I was like, what? Yeah, this is what I was afraid of, but I haven't really been keeping up with with them of late. Okay. Um, but I, I am for uh, people in North America or black people anywhere um, fighting for reparations. I'm for that. I'm not against that at all. Right. I think we, I think you can do that though without trying to kick me out the house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah, that's the part. I that's where I draw the line. I don't know that you have to become divisive to do so. Yeah. But you can you can go for reparation. You know what I'm saying? People in the Caribbean, whatever um countries were enslaving them at that time, like go for it. I'm I'm for that. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. And when you talk to Ados and you go back and like you go, you push back on them. Their their whole thing is, you know. You got, how could you have a problem with with us wanting reparations? And I'm like, it's how you're going about it, though. You do not have to attack someone. You know, like like think like, like to say, I don't have to hate white people to love. Like I don't have to. I don't. Me loving myself doesn't automatically mean I hate you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not me loving me, right? right? So to love myself, I don't have to hate you. Right. So that's how right. I look at it. Like, okay, if you can, I get what they're, they're doing. They're narrowing it down. And they say, no, only people who are, uh, what, what does uh, Brother Tariq uh, call it? FBA, Foundation of Black Americans. Only people who are Foundation of Black Americans are entitled to these reparations. And that's really what's happening. That's where the divide is happening. They want to be very clear on that. Yeah, yeah. I haven't kept up, kept up with them of recent. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, I, I, I don't know. I'm with you. I'm not sure where it is. I haven't heard much here lately as it was, you know, in the beginning when, you know, mm -hmm. he kind of took off like a rocket. He had potential um, uh, presidential candidates talking about the movement and everything else. So um, I don't know. I, I think a lot of times I, I see us shoot ourselves in the foot a lot because we want to be so isolated <laughs> we want to separate ourselves so so far we already isolated to a certain degree and we want to mm -hmm. do it even more and we don't understand the power of having allies in the world and the power yeah. of coming together how much more we can we could accomplish collectively if we came together as opposed to you know what i'm saying again holding your fist tight looking right. for something, but want, you know what I'm saying? But, but, but going to make you shrink your numbers even further in an effort to get it. To me, it just makes no sense. It just, it, right. doesn't, it doesn't add up for me. So, um, and we don't, we have about five or six more minutes left. Um, I did want to talk about, um, the separation, the separation of, uh, in society, um, as far as, um, 
where we are now is we're an integrated society. <laughs> and I put quotations on that word integrated. Um, and what, where, where are we going in the future? What does that look like? You know, I think a portion of black America just wants Trump removed. <laughs> they figure if, just, if Trump is out of the way, if Trump is gone, then I can get back to feeling a little bit better under oppression. I can feel a little it, bit. It, it still goes back to that savior, that whole waiting for a savior idea. Yeah. It still goes back to yeah. That. Because we, 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 really, we really believe that the presidential candidate or whoever is the president of the United States of America. Listen, how many presidents have we been through? What number is, is Trump? What number president is Trump? <laughs> 40, 40, 45. How, how many presidents have we gone through and we still haven't gotten it? It is up to us. Yeah. It is up to us. I actually, I actually think Trump was actually good for that mm. because I think it, it really puts a lot of people to, to a place within themselves that they, they have refused to go. And Trump just came in and hit them in the back. Boom! Get him there. You know? And so, <laughs> he strikes so fear, though, it. Hanifa. He strikes huh? fear. He strikes fear yeah. in the hearts of a lot of us. And I think Trump was good for in that sense. You know how you talk about nature yeah. and how there has to be some positive and negative. Mm -hmm. There has to be some smoothness and some roughness. Yeah. There's always polarities. That yeah. is life. Yes. Okay. Trump falls in line with that. You guys were getting too comfortable with Barack. That's <laughs> what happened. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> that's the real deal, Holy. I, I agree yeah. with you so much there and i i see this we as are comfortable with, we are comfortable with barack and trump came in and said hey hey, hey now <laughs> hey, hey, you still black and this, this is still america <laughs> you still black and this is still america mm. ah, yeah it's real. it's real it's real i think if the, we once we get past our fear you yeah. know what i'm saying because that's what i see a lot of i think trump scares people you know what i'm saying and they Oh my God, oh my God, what's he going to do next? Oh my God, look what he did now. Oh my God, oh my God. And you know what I'm saying? So we all, we, we, we're hypersensitive around this whole Donald Trump scenario. But I see it as an opportunity. I'm looking at the whole situation like, well, shit. He, excuse my French, um, here's our opportunity to, okay, if they ain't going, if they, if, 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 if they don't want us here then all right let's come on let's 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 bind together let's work collectively together and let's create our own thing let's do our own thing you know why you know why are we so dependent on this society for our every waking want and need that's dangerous because, that's dangerous. because we have a we have a hierarchy of saviors we go from okay the government okay is going to save us and, or the president is going to save us, mm. and then we go up to this invisible God in the sky mm. that will make the savior. We have this whole hierarchy of saviors, mm. a whole hierarchy. All and outside we, of ourselves. All outside of ourselves. Yeah. Every last and we, and we, have, we have a higher self. We have a higher self, the real savior, mm. our higher self, that's sitting up there like, I'm going to let you do your thing. <laughs> Let's see how that works this year. Let, let me Let's see how that works this year. Yeah. Our higher self is so unbothered, like, look at this fool again. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we have we gotta get rid of the hierarchies. Like you remove one, and you know what? Alcohol, like I said, it goes back even within yourself. Let me tell you something. When you start to peel back the layers within yourself, you find that I don't want to even say it's a hierarchy, but you have and you have even created a hierarchy within your own self. Mm. And when you, be, you begin to dismantle one thing, you realize, whoa, a whole mm. lot of matrix. There ain't no one matrix, there's several. Mm. There's a ton of matrices that you have to, you know, you, you will exist in one. So when you peel back one, you're like, whoa, I got to deal with this too. Just a lot of layers. And it's the same thing on the outside where it's like, okay, the government is, the government is not going to save us. Let's go for the president. 
We really believe it matters who the president of the United States of America is. I, 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 I am still blown by this. What are we waiting for? We wait for it to get to the hundred president of the United States to finally accept that it doesn't matter what it, as it pertains to black people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that we've ever accomplished in this society came by way of struggle. Came right. by way of struggle. Ain't right. no president sit down with no stroke of a pen and say, you know what, you know, I, you know, I see them over there struggling a little bit. Let me cut them a break. No, we was up in their face. You go, we for, we demanding, we forcing, we gonna make you cut us a break. And so all of that again goes back to the higher self. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Until you ready to get up and get out here and put on your 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 your, your soldier boots and mm -hmm. strap them up and come on out here and fight this war, then we gonna we can expect more of the same. If it ain't Trump, it's just gonna be another somebody on either side of the aisle. I don't know why we thinking that these whole Democrats is the Democrats who put all our brothers and sisters in jail. You know what I'm saying? That, that started under the democracy, you know, the Democratic Party. But anyway, so I like that um, Sister Ava Muhammad, um, she's one a student minister of, under the, other than in the nation. She's been torn. She's been doing this for several years now. She's wrapping it back around. And I see the, I see the, the focus and what they're doing. And so they're basically doing all these town hall meetings in all the major cities and some smaller cities and stuff about what separation looks like. Come on, let's talk, sit down, let's talk about put it, they putting it the thought in the minds of the people. What does this look like? You know what I'm saying? We need to start move, at least thinking about it. If you are not ready and prepared to move towards that, what does that look like? Because in yeah. a lot of people's mind, it looks different. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Some people think separation means leave America all together. Some others think take a piece of land and call us own and let's cultivate and build there. You know, mm -hmm. others feel like it's a really it's just a state of mind state. You know what I'm saying? Let's just separate anything that they got going for themselves. Let them have it. Let's start building our own. And so separation looks so much different. But I like that they are gathering the people together. And so we can all be on a similar, a, 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 a unison accord and to what this really looks like. And at least have, start thinking in that direction, really. I think we got, we, in reference to what you just said, because I know we're out of time, yeah. um, we always have to remember that the body follows the mind and not the other way around. Good point. You cannot, if you have, se if you, separation or sanctification, however we want to put it, starts in the mind. Yeah. It starts in the mind and then the physical follows, yeah. right? The issue that a lot of us are having is that we're trying to get people to physically separate who have not even begun to separate mentally. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the key. Yeah, that's the key thing. That's it is the why has to follow the mental and not the other way around. Yeah, that's why I say I see I see the vision of what they're yeah, doing. You yes, know what I'm saying? yes. Because that's where it starts. Actually, I was considering to... actually coming out. I saw the fly. I was like, I think I might, I might want to attend this. Yeah, and it's her second go round. She was here last year. Oh, okay. Under, under the same premise, and they've been moving. I know somebody on um somebody um close on her um team. And okay. they kind of keep me abreast. And so they've been moving cross country and here they coming back around. So they're doing what they need. They're doing their part and dropping the seeds. You know, cool. planting those seeds. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's all I have. We are definitely out of time. Oh, I wanted to mention the debate. Uh, we're hosting a debate here at Everlasting Life called To Vote or Not To Vote. That is the question. That's coming up on a Tuesday on February the 11th, right here at Everlasting Life in Capitol Heights, Maryland, 7 p.m. We have two real strong brothers intellectually gonna be debating the topic. Should we be voting? Um, does voting help us? Does voting push us towards liberation? Or should we should we be going a whole another route? Should we be, right. you know, using our efforts and energy and force towards something outside of the, the political realm? So they're going to be debating this. Um, again, that's Tuesday, February the 11th, right here at Everlasting Life, 
starts at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a very interesting night. Um, and keep an open mind. You know, I, I, I advise and, and advise people to bring the children, bring the youth out, because um, these are the kind of discussions that really get their minds going to thinking critically. You know, so um, and things that they may not never learn inside of these institutions that they that, that go to in the public schools and stuff. So bring them out and let them um, hear different sides of the story so they can formulate their own opinions in, 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 in intellectually. So um, again, I just want to invite everybody out for that debate as well. Hanifa, you want to share anything before we go? Reminder that <laughs> for myself included, <laughs> it, um, the Empower Hour will be airing every Thursday at 6 p.m. going forward. Yes. We are no longer doing Wednesdays at 2 p.m. It will be Thursday at 6 p.m. Make sure that you share if you like what you hear. We are looking forward to bringing a whole lot of different guests on again, and we might be touching or touch retouching um, a lot of different topics that we feel is, is really significant. Um, financial literacy, health, uh, relationship, uh, mental health, we're probably going to be uh, touching those again throughout the year. So we definitely look forward to you guys' support, and we thank you guys for watching us and tuning in. Um, definitely, we appreciate you, and Happy New Year to you guys as well. Happy New Year, and all your shares as well. We appreciate you sharing the message too, and if you, this is your first time tuning in, you can catch all our past episodes. Hanif and I have been doing this now for about two years. So we yes. got a lot of information out there on YouTube, and it's under the Miss Free the People YouTube channel. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, we encourage you to go on and purge there on our YouTube station. We'd love to have you. And until next week, family, take care of each other out there. Peace.